Leprechaun Returns is currently the final film in the Leprechaun franchise, and acts as a legacy sequel to the original movie, even bringing back one of its cast members. No, it's not Jennifer Aniston. So join us and find out if they were able to rediscover any of that original, um, uh, magic. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight, I am Peter, and joining me as always is Tim. Please call me Werner Hertzcock. <laughs> I was going to bring that up, Tim, believe it or not, that was going to come up uh, <laughs> later on. Uh, we're here today, we are a horror movie podcast, we talk about horror movie mm -hmm. every week, or maybe sometimes a bit more frequently in, say, the month of October, because it's the Octoberthon, it's the mm -hmm. month of Halloween. And we're here to finally put an end to a franchise <laughs> that has been going on for probably about three years. Uh, it's inflated because obviously you were in paternity leave for a while, but it's been a long time. We've been doing these Leprechaun movies <laughs> far too long. So it's finally time to... Hey, people seem to dig them, you know, they're gold, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a pun. Is the gold thing intentional? I always say that. <laughs> You've never said that. You've literally never... I don't even know, what? <laughs> if it wasn't for these previous Leprechaun movies, I don't even know if I'd ever <laughs> heard you say the word gold before. Never <laughs> never made in that context. <laughs> so, we're here to talk about Leprechaun Returns, which is the mm -hmm. current eighth and final Leprechaun movie. Uh, you might call it a requel, which is a direct sequel <laughs> to the original film that ignores all the sequels. It gets the Halloween 2018 treatment... Mm -hmm. Uh, or whatever other so, comparison you want to make. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually uh, j just call it a legacy sequel because, like, re requel to me sounds like... Uh, I, I think I, I, I heard that when Bruce Campbell was talking about with Evil Dead 2 because it's... The beginning is, like, a little bit of a remake and then it goes into sequel territory. This I would call a legacy sequel where, you know, basically going back to the basics, we had that horrible, horrible reboot that... <laughs> yeah, we just will never speak of again. Uh, that you know, they realized that they had to go back. You know, it's like a like Jack and Kate from uh from Lost. So like we have we have to go back to the island. The <laughs> producers of the Leprechaun franchise they said they we have to go back to the beginning, back when a a young Jennifer Aniston was just dipping her toes into Hollywood stardom and Warwick Davis, uh, you know, a, a, a actor extraordinaire was taking a chance on, on doing a, a role that was so outside of his comfort zone. And uh, mm. as they say, cinema magic was born on that faithful day. Not to mention leprechaun magic, which, you know, <laughs> plays a big part of the film. So much to take in there from that introduction. Um, the problem I'll have with saying Evil Dead 2 is what a requel is, is that that means that it's the only requel that ever existed, because... It is. I mean, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween 2018 is a legacy sequel, sure, but it is also a requel mm -hmm. in that it's there to start afresh. Jurassic World is a requel mm. because it's there to continue on with the continuity intact, but also you know move forward mm -hmm. and so it's a reboot and a sequel it's it's a requel mm -hmm. big mama's house like father like son is a little bit of a requel <laughs> I, I i i guess or was that a trilogy closer or did they did they do that one later i don't know i, I haven't kept up on my big uh mama's <laughs> house lore so you know what's funny about that franchise if i may tangent for just a sec uh so you know, I mean, I, I don't know if it's been a while since you've seen them, but, like, the first one... <laughs> for the record, yeah. I've only seen the first one, and it was a long-ass time ago, but continue. So, the first one has, you know, that very stereotypical plot where, you know, for whatever reason, some undercover cop or FBI agent or whatever uh, has to go undercover. Uh, so, I, I think in the case of this movie, it, it's something to do with, like, the big mama's daughter or granddaughter is... Uh, like a target of someone or something. Ah. So, you know, so he has to go undercover as Big Mama to protect her. I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. So if, if that's not entirely accurate, you know, uh, please forgive me. Uh, but so what's funny about that is they did a sequel where, you know, Martin Lawrence uh, once again has to go undercover. But this time it's for a case that has nothing to do with Big Mama. And he just like 
goes undercover as Big Mama again <laughs> for no reason. Like, like there's a reason in the first movie, like as silly as it is, like there's a reason why he's dressing up like Big Mama. But the second one, it's just like, I guess he just likes being this <laughs> large mother <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, I've never seen the sequel uh, or really? the third one or if there's a fourth, <laughs> the fourth one. Uh, I I do vaguely remember. I mean, it's not someone he's related to though, because he does fall for the girl that he's protecting. If I remember yeah. right, but which is very funny. <laughs> I'll let that tone speak for itself. Because uh, <laughs> you like you think your grandma's hitting on you, but it's really an undercover <laughs> police man. <laughs> he's under a lot of cover. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's that seemed even less genuine somehow in the previous time you said something was funny so yes leprechaun returns which is obviously uh, lionsgate but they actually teamed up with the sci-fi channel that's right this is a sci-fi channel original <laughs> this movie so technically it's a tv movie uh, just the fact that i couldn't see this in theaters Ugh. Ugh. oh yeah it broke your heart uh, what's, what's funny so there's two things this had going for it going in for, for me one mm-hmm. is that sci-fi later did the slumber party massacre reboot which was actually pretty decent and it's like, okay yeah, so yeah you know uh in hindsight they've got a bit of a track record and the second thing <laughs> is the director stephen kostansky is the director of psycho gorman and you know and the void which you know to me those are both two pretty solid movies yeah, not not flawless, but certainly fun and yeah. good B movies. Um, <laughs> so you know, there's, 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 oddly, there's a couple of things going for it uh, mm-hmm. in, in a weird way. Um, but uh, yeah, the premise is that Jennifer Aniston's character from the first movie, she had a daughter. Now Jennifer Aniston mm-hmm. was offered uh, a role in this film, but uh, let's just say they couldn't afford post French Jennifer Aniston. Well, not entirely true we 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 get her a little bit <laughs> we don't get jennifer aniston we, we do not well no that's that's not entirely true <laughs> no, it's entirely true <laughs> someone doing an impression of her voice is not jennifer aniston <laughs> uh, you cannot tell me that that's not her it is <laughs> one for one the exact same voice <laughs> nonsense uh so mm-hmm. instead we get her daughter um mm-hmm. and their characters thrown under the bus we <laughs> we hear so many awful <laughs> things about how her life ended um between movies but the, her daughter is returning to the house that the original leprechaun was set in because mm-hmm. she's teaming up with a bunch of sorority sisters who are doing like some sort of weird <laughs> environmental friendly experiment to live off the grid for a month so there's a lot of like weird references hey, they're to... going green you know perfect plot for a leprechaun movie <laughs> I bet that's what the joke was. I bet that's what they thought in the writer's room and said, that's a great idea. They're going green, get it? We, we'll drop every reference we can to clovers. At one point, someone mentions mm-hmm. clover juice, and I'm like, what is clover juice? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of... So they've got solar panels, and there's a lot of talk of being vegan, and a lot of talk of um, just doing things in a, a environmentally friendly way. And then the leprechaun eventually is going to make a lot of like weird digs, which almost made it feel like it was an anti, and like it, you know it was like someone who was like trying to like make fun of people who are environmentally friendly and are trying to like reduce their carbon footprint. I'll be honest, I could not ascertain what the politics of this movie were. <laughs> it was hard to tell. It was definitely hard to tell, but. Uh, of course, uh, because they're messing about with the well, the, the leprechaun, I assume, originally went down, because I don't remember the first movie at all. You know that's what happened. Come on. <laughs> the leprechaun... They show you in the beginning. <laughs> ...is re- returned to, to the world, um, mm-hmm. and, yeah, you know, starts doing his... He wants his gold, he starts killing people, and we'll talk about all the specifics later in spoilers, but we're going to stick to spoiler-free territory for now. <laughs> So, I guess I'll ask the question. <laughs> Tom, how do you feel about Leprechaun Returns? So, uh, again, we're coming off just the absolute abysmal train wreck of a, a movie, which was Leprechaun Origins. Just uh, awful, awful garbage. Uh, and this movie... Well, it's in the title. It returns. It's, uh, you know, it's going back to form. We're bringing the leprechaun back. Uh, like you said, um, it's very interesting because 
going into it and you know obviously i, I saw this when it first came out uh but you know going into it it, it was strange because like ugh, sci-fi original and ugh, warwick davis isn't back and ugh, it's a legacy sequel uh, all that stuff is uh you know it's, it, it's kind of red flags um but then like you said you know the director is uh yeah actually i think someone who is quite good uh you know, at, at least the two films of his that I've seen, I, you know, had a pretty fun time and enjoyed. So, uh, you know, actually pretty hopeful um, coming in <laughs> uh, to watch this. Uh, so then actually watching it, I gotta say, I think it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I, uh, I do have fun with it. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that I enjoy. The... A uh, new person playing the leprechaun. He's okay, you know. Um, mm. Definitely not doesn't have the charm of Warwick Davis, but yeah, it, it's fine. Uh, um, you know, there's some decent enough kills. I think the parts that kind of get me is uh, I, I feel like it's a squidge too long. Like, you know, it's only like, what, like 90 to 100 minutes, somewhere in between there. And yes, obviously when it's on the sci-fi channel, I'm sure they need to have a certain length for commercials or whatever, but mm. I, I feel like it could have been trimmed a little bit. Um, and then I, I think the, the problem with this versus some of the other movies is like, obviously Leprechaun is, you know, very cheesy and campy franchise. Uh, and this, I don't know. It feels like maybe it was trying like a little too hard to be funny versus like, being earnest like the the characters uh sometimes i kind of had like cheesy jokes uh like like very i don't know i feel like very like wrote like sitcom tropes or something like where you know a character will try to say it one liner and then they'll say like well i can't believe no one was around to hear that it's like mm, yeah, come on <laughs> that's not really not funny uh but i mean they're okay they're not bad uh you know the, the premise is fine enough uh whatever just do what you gotta do to to get the leprechaun back it was nice to see you know uh i, I would say to see two of the you know original cast returns uh you know they have ozzy you know who's a big character from the first movie and uh and again uh jennifer anderson lets uh lends her voice uh for that one scene so <laughs> no she doesn't it's definitely her <laughs> it's it it's definitely her <laughs> uh <laughs> uh so yeah i you know People probably expect you to be to to come in here and be like, "Oh my God, it's awesome! It's it's a return to form." And uh, you know, it, it, I'm not saying I, I don't dislike the movie. It's just you know, it's a pretty high bar, and I wouldn't say it totally delivered. But I mean, it's fun. It, it's fun enough. Uh, Wait, hold on. Know, especially for a sci-fi movie, it's good. <laughs> what did you say about high bar? <laughs> a, I mean, when you're looking at the rest of the series, you know, there's there's a bit of a gold standard that they set with. Some of the earlier films. There's that word gold again. You think it'd be funny <laughs> dropping the word gold in wherever you can. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a couple of decent deaths. Like I'll I'll mm -hmm. I'll I'll fest that up. There's a couple of fun Thank deaths. You. <laughs> and uh, I think the fact that Kazansky obviously uh, you know does a lot of like effects work and has done in, in his past movies, mm -hmm. you kind of see some of that charm coming through in a few of the kills. Um, yeah. I, I will say, tonally, it felt a bit weird to me, because I felt like it wanted to be like a serious horror film for the first like 20 to 30 minutes, and then mm -hmm. it started to veer very quickly into silly territory. Um, mm -hmm. I, that, that, that felt a bit odd to me, especially since it's like, we know, like, it's one thing if this is the first movie, and you're like, okay, we're going to like hit the audience with a surprise with what the tone is when the leprechaun's up to, up to no mm -hmm. good. But... Um, here, here it's like we, we, we're expecting the silly and I thought oh it's taking itself very seriously and then the silly mm -hmm. stuff started happening and I was like oh I'm getting whiplash now like what, why, why, why didn't you just start with this tone yeah <laughs> uh, so that's that's something that was there for me uh, most of the characters are kind of annoying there's like the main mm -hmm. girl's fine like the main the main daughter's fine yeah. but all the other ones that are trying to be these various archetypes like wound up annoying me there's like the girl who's like in charge of the place who's constantly getting mm -hmm. really antsy about everything and doing things properly. Mm -hmm. She's just annoying. Uh, the mm -hmm. flip side of her, which is the girl who just wants to drink beer and party all the time, she's equally mm -hmm. annoying, just in the opposite way. Um, yeah. And then there's the other girl who, the running gag for the whole movie seems to be, she doesn't want to have sex with this ex-boyfriend, but then keeps having sex with her ex-boyfriend. Like, that's her whole thing, the whole movie. Yeah. And... <laughs> 
It's not even like they she... say that there's no good parts for women. <laughs> well, and and the boyfriend in question is also annoying because he's this like dumb jock mm-hmm. dude who doesn't get yeah. or understand anything. And then bizarrely, we round out the cast with like his friend, who I don't know why he's friends with him because they don't they're nothing alike. But this other guy <laughs> who looks far too old to be a college student, he looks way older <laughs> than the rest of the cast. He's a filmmaking student, and. That's just an excuse for them to make really awkward references to other directors for like throughout the film. You mm-hmm. joked about one at the start where he, he mentions Werner Herzog and someone says Werner Herzog, and <laughs> funny, uh, you know they, they bring up you know they they, they mentioned uh, I don't know various directors. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so someone calls him Martin Scorsese at one point. Like it, it just it's just this weird. Like, it, it felt very film school. Like, we're going to have a reason to name drop all these directors. We like. Uh, mm-hmm. in the movie like so that was kind of annoying so yes the ca- the characters frustrated me and i found them to just like be these archetypes and it's like they were trying to be funny by having them be these archetypes but it just didn't have the charm to actually work for me yeah so that's my main problem no i mean i i don't disagree with that i think it's because I, I think a lot of the the previous movies are funny but most of the comedy is because like the characters are very over the top and cheesy and mm-hmm. i mean I, I guess technically the characters are over the top here but it seems like they're they're tr- they're more trying to it's be like they're earnest. purposely written it's yeah. not mm-hmm. you know like and, and the and i'm not sticking up for the original leprechaun movies but they're bad and they're kind of like they're just a kind of a they're cheesy and if that appeals to you it kind of works i also mm-hmm. say i think the le- anytime the leprechaun tries to crack a joke in this almost all of them suck uh, some of them are <laughs> really bad and like just land like a wet fart. <laughs> like his quips just are not good. Yeah, well, that, any, that's why you're missing that Warwick Davis charm. <laughs> uh, arguably, he sounds a bit more Irish than Warwick Davis ever did, but yeah. you know that's, that's, that's a silver lining. And uh, I noticed in the like I was looking on like uh, I forget if it's IMDb or, or Wikipedia, but he has a name in this one, which I don't think we've ever gotten a name before. And you don't hear his name in the movie, I, I don't believe. But he's credited as, like, Lubnin or, or something. Leprechaun. Oh, really? He's got, he's got a... Yeah. That's, that's I like, okay. I, didn't, I don't know if we've... Honestly, don't know if we've ever heard that in uh, one of the other films. Um, so what I think was kind of, like, strange about it is it seems like it's doing kind of these very typical, like requel legacy sequel kind of tropes in it but i don't i couldn't really tell if the movie is like you know trying to do it in a tongue-in-cheek way where it's like oh yeah like we're we're very aware that we're doing this kind of trendy you know sequel to the first movie kind of thing uh but wouldn't it be funny if we did it for a movie that's you know much more sillier versus like you know movies like halloween or whatever that um that usually gets that treatment um so I, I couldn't really tell if they were doing some of that stuff on purpose as kind of a jokey thing or if it was like, like, because you were saying the beginning does feel more serious. And I don't know if the comedy was trying to be like, oh, we're doing a more serious take on this thing. that's like very silly or if they were legitimately trying to, you know, have that kind of feel for it. It, it's, it, it kind of confused me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I say, the tone's kind of a real mixed signals kind of thing i, I wasn't really mm-hmm. sure what they were trying to achieve with that uh you, you 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 sort of referenced something you said someone like tracks a one-liner and makes a, a sort of meta comment about making a one-liner i'm sure there's, there's a lot of that not actually with one-liners per se but there's a lot of like moments where a character is going to do something and then they'll say oh no that's silly oh, almost like it's trying to be like stream for a moment where the character will kind of reference mm-hmm. that that's a dumb trope to do and we'll do something else but it always feels really clunky and forced and like you, you can mm-hmm. feel again it feels like a student movie where the, the writing's just so in your face with the, the this like sort of weird meta point that it's trying to make uh i was feeling that quite a lot and i think maybe it, it doesn't land it, it's, it lands even worse when the characters are already annoying because you just kind of find yourself mm-hmm. uh being frustrated that they're trying to be witty with this character now when you've already lost me you've already lost me with this character they're, they're not entertaining mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. uh so that's that's kind of rough uh, so, so, some of the kills are alright though. There's a couple of fun kills. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it that at the very least. Um, yeah, like you're saying, like you know, the director obviously has like um, 
you know history with like practical effects and gore and stuff so uh yeah i think you know the kills were fun and then it looks like there's you know obviously there was some very cgi stuff but then you know it felt like there was some actual like physical you know uh like kind of uh, effects that they were doing that you know seemed pretty cool I mean, some of the kills didn't really make any sense, but that, you know what? If you're if you're already in, oh, yeah. <laughs> in, in this leprechaun movie, you can just go with it. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, I I, I can't really. I, I don't hold the original six in particularly high regard. <laughs> so to me, this isn't really that much of a step down. If anything, it's breaking even. <laughs> so sure. You know, I, I I'm a weird person to come to to judge this one. Uh, I'm only really judging it on its own merits on its own, which is it's it got some fun kills. It's not got too much more to offer, and the characters are kind of annoying. So mm-hmm. I would say it's like if I was comparing this to a slasher movie, which it almost kind of is, because it's you know it's, he's still killing the the people sure. one by one, even if he's got like a goal. I would mm-hmm. say it's it's a watchable slasher movie with a couple of good kills, <laughs> but. I wouldn't recommend it, really. Okay, okay. <laughs> take that as a win. <laughs> oh, you take that as a win, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, better than either of those In the Hood movies, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, well, not for everyone, I suppose. <laughs> also, R.I.P. Coolio, who was in In the Hood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, weirdly somber for a minute. I, I, I just, I, I am just saw he passed away like yesterday or today, whatever, whatever day it was. I think, yeah, I think it was earlier today or maybe last night, not yeah. sure, but uh, yeah, R.I.P., friend of the show. And because Coolio. it was bloody disgusting that I saw tweet it, they mentioned Leprechaun because it's a horror movie that he's of been course, in. yeah. <laughs> he was also in uh, the, the convent, I believe. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, I think the most movie th- we should probably do at some point. I think most people are original know him from uh, the Keenan Kell opening. Sure. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so. Uh, I didn't really know his music, but. I... Yeah, I mean, I, like, I probably couldn't tell you any songs other than Gangster Paradise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I know that song, yeah. That, I mean, that song's super famous, but yeah. anything else I couldn't tell you. So. Um, well, okay, I guess we'll just give the spoiler warning because I, I, I don't know what else I've got to say without just talking <laughs> about all the antics that happens in the movie. So, uh, yes, um, Lila is Jennifer Aniston's daughter in this? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't think I can tell you any other characters' names, but... <laughs> no, I, but I'm looking at them now and I'm like, Katie, Meredith, Rose, I'm like, <laughs> none of these are ringing a bell uh, yeah <laughs> yeah Andy I guess Matt for the director dude I think I did notice that so that sounds about right <laughs> so yeah fair enough fair enough <laughs> um also the uh, voice later on who you're claiming was Jennifer Aniston was <laughs> an actress called Hella McDonald uh I mean she could have been using an alias if she maybe like you know she said, like, hey, for my optics, it probably wouldn't look good for me doing a sci-fi movie. I get that, but I'm part of this franchise, damn it. I, I need to be in here, so just let me go the Alan Smithy route and you just set me up with a fake name, and uh, but I'll still do it. I think that's what happened. So Jennifer Aniston, who never came back for a single sequel in the previous <laughs> entries, you think cared so much about joining this sci-fi original sequel in 2018 (laughs) that she (laughs) went under a pseudonym and pretended to be someone else just so she could be a part of it i I mean is it that unbelievable i mean you know if jamie lee is coming back in you know uh david gordon green's halloween you know is really that much of a stretch (laughs) that jennifer aniston would lend her voice to the sci-fi original movie but no, no, ask for it to be credited no. under a different name. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, see, those two things are very different. One of them is being paid a handsome amount as the st- and is the star of the movie. The other one, you're claiming wanted to be a part of it so much, but was worried that sci-fi <laughs> being connected to her name would ruin her reputation. Um, mm-hmm. That she did it in secret and is in this IMDb credit, and the credit in the movie is lying to us. That's what you're saying. <laughs> All right, how about this? Uh, 
everyone sound off in the comments if you think it's it's the the real the real gen so do uh i guess hashtag real gen in the comments if you uh think heather is the real deal maybe do uh hashtag heather is the real deal <laughs> in the comments <laughs> and uh pete will tally the votes and no, I, won't. I guess pick a random commenter uh at random as a winner and send them a prize i absolutely will not do that <laughs> what what part of it did you not like <laughs> i i disagree to all of this these these things um well you can't control the comments so if people want to you can still comment <laughs> <laughs> like you, what you presented there was a fact and then an absurd conspiracy theory that you yourself had just come <laughs> up with in the last 10 minutes. That That is the, the two options that you compared to one another. Okay, well, do you at least agree that if it wasn't Jennifer Aniston that did it, then the person that did do it had to have had some type of vocal surgery to sound exactly like Jennifer <laughs> Aniston? Can you at least agree to that? I'm afraid, Tim, I cannot, because... <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't think she sounded exactly like her. I could tell it was what? someone else. What? <laughs> what? I was what? like, that's an imposter. What? I don't... What are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying you didn't sound that what? good. <laughs> How? I don't get... I oh, These are foreign words to mine ear. <laughs> I don't, yeah, you're you're crazy town. You don't. I don't know. You, you <laughs> must have banged your head this morning, because yeah, yeah that's just nonsense. I don't want to tell you, Tubby. Maybe it, I okay. I will concede that they might have recorded a different actress, but then in post <laughs> used a voice filter to <laughs> make it sound just like her. Or maybe, like, someone got a cameo from her and had to record the lines. <laughs> you can do that, you know? <laughs> Actually, that's, that's, I'm curious what the legality would be of paying someone to cameo and giving them a script and saying, hey, I'd like to say this. And then you, it turns out that you actually insert that into your, like, movie as a, like, voiceover somewhere. <laughs> like, can they sue you because you, like, misled them and actually are, are making money off of their voice work? You probably can. It's probably That's probably highly illegal, Tim. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, that if you pay for the cameo, you can do whatever you want with it. It's free country. You can't profit from it. Well, if you make a movie that's non-profit. You... Well, yeah, but why? What's, what's the point of doing that? <laughs> I guess it's all about money for you, huh? I'm so, movies cost a lot of money to make. Doing one for no profit. Not the ones I make. <laughs> Real movies need to make some money back to justify the cost that were spent on them. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it's, man, it just Capitalism has just <laughs> ruined your, your tiny Irish brain. Uh, but... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. First of all, Scottish, not Irish. Secondly... <laughs> we were talking about leprechauns, so. <laughs> Secondly, if... <laughs> Let's say James Cameron decided to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. this, Director of Avatar 2. Yeah, let's not make any money from Avatar 2. Walt Disney yeah. himself would reanimate just so he could have a heart attack and die again. <laughs> like, that, that is how severe a decision that would be. The billions of m money <laughs> that has literally mm -hmm. been thrown down the toilet in such a circumstance. I would stand up and applaud, though, if he, if he made that decision. If he said, hey, you know what? I'm so happy with how this movie came out that I'm just, I'm buying everyone's ticket. Like, oh. go to the movie, <laughs> I'll buy the ticket, I'll watch it with you. <laughs> For <laughs> everyone in America. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, what are we talking Okay, so yes, Jennifer Aston's daughter. We're still at the start of the goddamn movie. We're not even starting <laughs> progressing to the plot yet. Let's stop tangenting. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Addison's daughter, Lila, mm -hmm. arrives in town on a bus, and mm -hmm. it's such a small town that Ozzy is both the cab driver in town, the only cab driver, and also mm -hmm. the painter of the town. 
which I th- <laughs> which I thought was particularly odd, given that they drive past her college campus and it's like a proper mm. actual big university campus that looks like it's quite modern and is full of students. And I'm like, surely if nothing else, all of these students filling this town would mean that there would be other services because there'd be p- reasons to have them now. Oh, Peter, Peter, Peter. You just don't understand the collegiate lifestyle. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure college college students need cabs. They also need food (laughs) services. Uh, Although there is at least one food service. There's legitimate pizza, as we see uh, early Mm -hmm. on in the film. Mm -hmm. Did you not notice this when the guys bring over pizza at the start? The, 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 The shop was called Legitimate Pizza. Uh, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my theory is that it's a vegan pizza place, and that's the joke. Uh, and I don't even know what the leprechaun would say to that. Oof. Something, I don't know, derogatory, probably. Yeah. <laughs> He's a meat-eating little uh, fossil fuel-loving little piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> The the Leps uh, politics are probably not on the best side, if if you know what I mean. Yeah, he 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 probably still uh, like you know in this movie you see him like react to a smartphone at one point because technically in mm-hmm. this continuity he's been down a well for twenty five years. Yeah. Uh, he reacts to that as like what it's a Walkman and a, <laughs> a camera. How impressive! Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I bet I bet he like I, I bet he's still upset that like you know women can vote like i bet that's where his politics are lying still yeah i mean i wish they would have played with that a little bit more like would have been funny you know because because he's essentially a fish out of water in this movie so why not play with that a little bit more like maybe he can you know make a joke like hey like you know where's my friend bill cosby and they can be like oh (laughs) leprechaun like (laughs) we gotta sit you down and and, and tell you about what happened (laughs) (laughs) maybe he's got like a skit where he puts on one of the wacky like sweaters and starts doing like a bill cosby impression everyone's like no dude like seriously (laughs) dude that's messed up now you can't do like what what happened (laughs) oh dude (laughs) oh um but yes, I'm never getting to the plot of this movie. I'm. So, <laughs> the, 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 so she gets a ride from Ozzy, uh, who at first she thinks is a bit weird, but he's obviously very nice to her when they're actually in the car. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, he makes a lot of really weird, ominous little statements, though, that like <laughs> any normal person would react to it, and she just kind of overlooks them. But he's like, you know, we took care of everything. We saw to that. And then just before he goes, he says, but if everything isn't fine, if everything isn't okay, check the basement. And then she's like, huh? What's that? Yeah, I'm not sure if that was intentional, but I did think that was kind of funny. Like, because, yeah, it, it, he is like being like so weird and creepy and any normal person would be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what did you and my mother do? Like, to kill someone? Like, it's, you know, it's so weird sounding, but like you said, she's just like, huh? What? Okay, see ya. <laughs> yeah, and then we get introduced to the rest of the characters that are here and all their delightful personalities, which doesn't really add up too mm-hmm. much. Um, all I could really say is that uh, the main character's kind of a buzzkill because she's like, I never really had any friends because I had to look after my mother who was crazy because she believed in leprechauns. <laughs> and then she got cancer and she died. And everyone's just like, well, that's a buzzkill. I guess we want to... Yeah, like, no one's really, like, sympathetic. They're just kind of like, ew, your mom believed uh, in monsters? Like, <laughs> In fact, the very next scene where she's, like, she's down in the basement trying to fix the, the, the plumbing or whatever, and, like, mm-hmm. the, the, the boss girl, what's her name? Uh, Rose... Yeah, Rose comes down and is like, mm-hmm. uh, by the way, maybe talk less about your dead mother. And she's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm like, what a shitty <laughs> thing to say. Jesus. Yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, and I think it's this scene, actually, where I'll mention that the leprechaun not only does the moment from Apocalypse Now where he, his head comes up out of the water, he then says, mm-hmm. I love the smell of gold in the morning, which is a reference to Apocalypse Now. It's paraphrasing the, the, the napalm line. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a movie for film lovers. A lot of <laughs> film references. There, there's, a, there's a few dodgy references uh, throughout, mm. uh, I concur. So uh, so the one thing I do kind of want to address is that 
Address. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so formal term. Address. What do you want to address? I, so this is one thing that I kind of hate with, you know, these legacy sequels, requels, if you will. Uh, that Yeah, that's what I called them. <laughs> <laughs> like, in order to do it, you kind of have to, like, throw, like the like previous characters under the bus well i guess you don't have to but it seems like they often do where it's like well yeah jen, jen wanted more money so they said screw that your character's a crazy nut job yeah <laughs> but it's like even like in halloween where it's like you know at the end of these original movies or whatever it's kind of you know it's like okay well the character survives and like, yeah i'm hoping they have a happy ending or whatever uh but instead whenever you have these movies like this it's always like Oh no, yeah, that experience just made the person go crazy and they spent the rest of their life like preparing and, you know, uh, angry and like crazy and, you know, always on edge and like getting ready to fight this monster again. And it's like, oh Jesus, like can a character just be like, hey, uh, we did that, we we got past it, now I'm just gonna live a normal life? Like, do they always have to like become these like crazy, like, self survivalist <laughs> characters it does happen a lot uh so you know we 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 hear about uh what jen's up to what <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what she was up to before she died of cancer uh mm-hmm. so i'm i'm sure she's heartbroken finding out what the fate of her character was mm-hmm. in this movie it would have been funny if we got like some flashbacks where like lila was like a little girl or whatever and like jennifer aniston was <laughs> Yeah, like preparing her for this eventual day and like you know like giving her four leaf clovers and <laughs> like you know, teaching her all like the weaknesses of leprechauns and all this stuff yeah it's honestly the way the leprechaun first appears in front of someone other than obviously uh what's his face ozzy because ozzy, ozzy basically gets chest bursted from the leprechaun so i uh i'll be honest i really could not understand how the leprechaun gets resurrected <laughs> no like his his lep juice goes into ozzy uh a little bit he sort of swallows a little bit of him yeah but it's like how did that juice like come out in the first place though like i don't know i i think i was reading on like the the wikipedia entry or something it said that like so, like Ozzy had some of his gold that like reactivated him enough a little bit or something like that, but uh, that just seems weird to me. Like, no, then he have a gold. He had one gold coin. Yeah, he, the lep mentioned that later on. It's, uh, yeah, like he says he had some in his, like his uh, intestines, I think, because in the first movie, if you remember, he like swallows one of the gold coins. I don't know, but go on. <laughs> but yeah, he, he swallowed one of the gold coins in the movie, and that was like the big thing because they tried to give him back his pot of gold, but they couldn't because he had swallowed one of the coins. So all the gold wasn't there and he wanted to like kill Ozzy to get it. Um, but I was like, I mean, I don't really know <laughs> how that works, but I was kind of like, Oh wait, so the coins just been in his like stomach for 20, 30 years or whatever. <laughs> like they couldn't get it out. It just, it was sitting there the whole time. Yeah. I, I That's what I'm kind of assuming. But I'm like, I don't know. You wouldn't have passed it or like, I don't know if it's just sitting there. It seems like that's not healthy. <laughs> like you get surgery or something for that. Is it doing any harm? Just sitting there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Taking up valuable resources. Um, <laughs> we just have like, I don't know. Like it's not like they're like teeny tiny, yeah, you know, little microscopic things. Like those gold coins are pretty big, and I don't know, just imagine one like you know blocking up your intestines or something. Like <laughs> it doesn't seem well. Yeah. Um. I don't know, I'll have an answer for you, but we get this ridiculous effect of him coming out of the stomach of of of, of Ozzy. Uh the first time he fun. App- the first time he appears to uh Lila though, I thought it was like really weird and underwhelming just how small a moment it was. You think it'd be a big deal the first time she sees the leprechaun, but <laughs> instead, like he does this thing where he's like ripped off this big stuffed panda's head and he's <laughs> he's wearing the head and she pulls it off and sees it. like it's such a small scene and it, it just feels like it's not that big of a deal and part of me i was glad this didn't happen for long like very quickly the uh the party girl for lack of a better term she <laughs> kind of confirms that she also saw him because i was very very worried that this movie for a good half of it was going to be oh she's seen the leprechaun and they all just think she's crazy because her mom was crazy <laughs> and <laughs> we have to sit through that awkward like her try to convince them and all that bullshit. I'm glad that was just skipped over because I could have been, I would have been painfully bored. So I do that. 
Uh, well, I do like in the first, I think it's the first scene with him and Lila where he like, I don't really know why he does this, but he just rips off his face. But I thought that was a cool effect. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, I suppose. Um, he, uh, I mean, honestly, uh, to be honest, so much of this movie just kind of like, I think I've got a hard time together. Yeah, it's it's, hard, it's very hard to actually parse out like the sequence of events. So I think at this point, I'm just mm -hmm. going to talk about different scenes that are notable because you know there's a mm -hmm. there's a running gag that I thought would happen more than twice, but it happens twice where two different characters take a selfie with the leprechaun when they see right. him. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was going to be a running thing, and it, but you know, rule of threes, you have to do it a third time. Come on, that's yeah, that's how this works. Well, you know, what? the third time should be the the lep taking a selfie with someone, like yeah, with a severed head or something, because he's learned how yeah. to do it now. Yeah, yeah, you subvert <laughs> it in the third one, quite right. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he kills like the the dumb guy first, uh, which he has a pretty good death because his because he he fights so many, lifts him up with like, one hand and stuff, but he ultimately <laughs> kills him because he makes the solar panel on the roof fall off. And mm -hmm. we've seen people be sliced down the middle before where they're sliced sort of, like, you know, down the middle of their face. But this is sliced mm -hmm. down the side middle, if that makes sense. So that... The, the side middle, yeah. Yeah. The front half of his body and the back half of his body mm -hmm. fall apart. I mean, there's a couple mm -hmm. of good shots of that happening. Admittedly, this is ridiculous. In what world is the edge of the solar panel a razor blade? <laughs> like, That's true. Yeah. That, that doesn't make any sense. Surely, if anything, it would just like splat his head and he would just die from like blood force trauma yeah like it's yeah you don't think it would be like sharp enough to go through all the way but i mean it's fun enough that i can let it go and i mean honestly you can get away with so much in this movie because you can just explain it by you know being like oh it's leprechaun magic like he mm. yeah he did that but it it should, it'd be interesting to note though that at this point yes the leprechaun is back yes he is Full of magic, but without his gold, he 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 can't be returned to full power. So he's like, you know, he's he's a little weak at, at first. So I feel like it kind of takes him uh, a little bit to really get mm. his mojo back. Uh, it does. He gets more. His powerful, gold makes more... him powerful. Do you agree? <laughs> I mean, it's not about me agreeing. It's in the movie. Like he gets more powerful the more of his gold that he has. Okay, so you agree. <laughs> Well, yeah, but it's not an opinion. It's just it's the facts. <laughs> okay, so you agree that that is a fact. Thank you. <laughs> but you don't have to have me agree. That, oh, whatever. You're crazy logic. <laughs> Actually, okay, I'm skipping ahead a bit, but I have to talk about what might be the most talk about it. dumb scene in the whole movie you meet, right? This is just, we'll go mm -hmm. back and talk about the deaths and anything that sticks out, but... Mm -hmm. <sighs> so when we get down to <laughs> Lila... <laughs> Katie and Rose, who are the three that are left. So yes, we're 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 down to these three ladies, and they're following the map that Ozzy left for them to find the the, the leprechaun's gold, and it leads them mm -hmm. out to this derelict old truck, uh, in mm -hmm. the forest, and they find the pot of gold. But the gold's like there's like you know it's clearly only like maybe a tenth of what's supposed to be in it, mm -hmm. and it turns out here that Rose who set all this up used it she's already found the gold and used it to pay for all this equipment to do this experiment mm -hmm. uh the, the others thought she had to go fund me and she said that the only guy who paid any money offered her 20 dollars to get a nude photo which <laughs> which she said she did um mm -hmm. but she used the gold she, she used a cash mm -hmm. for gold program Is that guy's named peter i wonder <laughs> <laughs> it's why he's a bit much for a nude picture i can't go higher than 10 <laughs> It's fair enough. <laughs> you can't negotiate these things. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be bankrupt. Of um, course, yeah. Uh, no, so she she explains this, right? Uh, and that she used mm -hmm. a, ca a cash for gold program in another city to, <laughs> to pay for all this, right? Mm -hmm. And all I could think was, why were you still keeping the pot out here in this derelict car? Why is there still some <laughs> gold in it? Why wouldn't you take all the gold? And or if you weren't if you hadn't used it all yet, why would you like? I don't understand why it's why why is it still on the location that is in the map? Why did she leave it here? Well, she said she was planning on paying it back, so I guess she just has this kind of morality or some would, type of. Why would she pay it back? She found a pot of gold in a derelict car that's clearly not been looked at in like thirty years. Mm -hmm. 
find those keepers. The, 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 at a certain point, you're just, it's your lucky day. You found some gold. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, believe it or not, you know, not everyone in this world is, you know, the greediest person alive. Like some, this isn't being yeah. greedy. This is this isn't something you found like outside a house where someone's clearly dropped their valuable on the way into the house. Mm. You can knock on the door and say, "Hey, I think you dropped this here." Like this isn't that. This is derelict gold. This is like finding like treasure in the ocean that clearly was dropped <laughs> hundreds of years ago. No one's claiming this. It's yours. Enjoy it. <laughs> Well, I don't know, maybe she just wanted, wanted to be on the safe side. You never know. Someone, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, yeah, the moment you take it is the moment someone wants it back, which is literally what happens in this movie. <laughs> no, it's not. She was, she'd was she been spending it for months. It's only because Ozzy went to the well and got lep just. The, yeah, the lep but now back. the lep is back and he, and he wants it back. You know, it, it wasn't hers to spend. It was his. Like... That's no. irrelevant to the debate I'm making here, is why would she as a person <laughs> think that there was any reason to put it back or keep some of it there in, in the location that it's hidden in? Uh, I, I don't know, man. It's it's crazy to me that, like, you can't, like, even think of a reason why someone wouldn't want to just steal, like, like oh, why oh wouldn't you just God. steal that? It's not stealing. <laughs> and besides, we're saying she stole most of it. She just left like a tenth of it. Is like like this logic does not track at all. If I like, all right. <laughs> like l- let's say I go fishing, right, and I catch ten huge it. gigantic trout.s All right, and that's I say that's just fantasy. Be gone. <laughs> you never see me fish. You don't know how well I fish. You've never fished. <laughs> you don't know that you you've never say fished that. I can see it in your face you've never fished in your life if I alright <laughs> if, if everyone thinks I've fished then in the comments you can write um catch of the day <laughs> if you think I've never fished a day in my life you then you can do hashtag um Davy Jones Locker cause that's where I should go for lying alright so I've just caught 10 of the biggest trout you've ever seen in your life. And I say, great, this will feed my family for a month. So I bring the fish back and I I know I can't bring them in, into the house because my dogs are going to eat them. So I leave them in the front yard. And I put them all on, on wooden pikes. And I say, <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How does this scenario apply in any way to gold? I'm getting there. You, you'll see. You'll see. So your dogs aren't going to eat the gold. <laughs> you know, it's it's a metaphor, okay? It's not it's not supposed to be one to one exactly the same situation. I'm just giving you an example that you can use to wrap wrap your head around. So I I put my fish out on pikes in the front yard and I say, um, once a week, I will take one of these fish and I will prepare it as food for my family. So then after three days there's someone from a neighboring town that is you know always walks in a new neighborhood at night and as they're walking <laughs> they see the fish and they and they also have a family that's very hungry and they can't afford to feed their family so they take one of my fish cuz they know that eventually that they'll be able to repay and and provide another fish to me but they know that I'm using my fish to feed my family so they wouldn't want to take all of it so like what you're saying, like, oh, why wouldn't she just take all the gold? Well, some people will see that and they say, I do need help. So I will take a little bit to help me, but I don't want to screw over the rightful owner of this property. So that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> yes, but in this scenario, it's right outside your cool lived in house where people are actually operating. <laughs> this is a derelict car that has been mm-hmm. here for decades there's no houses or any habitable locations for males. Okay, well then just use the same example, but instead of my house, I put the fish in front of a derelict car. Like, <laughs> okay, It what? still works the same way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> if you leave something there in a derelict car, it's fair game for anyone who stumbles onto it. Well, okay. Like, what is this, your version of the five-second rule? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's, like, it's like maritime law, right? It's finders keepers. Okay. Well, I, uh, I can't even... 
uh, explain it to you. Capitalism has has ruined you. I, I, this I is can't even. Capitalism. <laughs> the, whole, the, the whole franchise is about capitalism. What? <laughs> it's about a, a man whose greed. Actually, no, the, no. The left is on the right. It's the it's everyone else who keeps stealing his gold. They're in the wrong. They're in the wrong. They all represent capitalism. They're just taking this hardworking immigrant's fortune from him, and you know all he does is try to get it back. And he's labeled a villain, and they try to kill him. If you can't see, that's uh, like maybe the clearest metaphor for capitalism that any movie has ever had. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can i can <laughs> I, 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 I was i was speechless i, I can't <laughs> i can't argue with that not because you're right but, <laughs> but because there's just some sort of weird insane logic going on here that i can't even get my head around i can't even <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> would you ever wear a shirt that says like i don't want an adult today or something uh it's not on my to-do list okay so uh, I, I wouldn't choose to wear it if someone you know to go with the capitalist if someone paid me to wear it i mean <laughs> i don't like i mean we're all like giant man babies like it's mm. it's fine but i just i don't know i, I just hate anyone that like uses the phrase adulting like oh like uh, i can't even adult today like oh don't want to be adulting today like you're a grown man <laughs> like jesus <laughs> the only the only conceit to that i will offer is that i think if you're sold it might become funny see if it's like a 70 year old man who's wearing that shirt mm -hmm. it might be slightly sure. amusing because they're ancient but i sure. think if you're That's in your funny. 20s or 30s and you say that it feels like you just don't want to grow up <laughs> yeah no <laughs> right. yeah you're a piece of shit yeah but if you're a 75 year old <laughs> man it's kind of ironic yeah all right that's funny <laughs> i don't believe you yeah, i'm alienating half our audience who's probably like all wearing t-shirts that say that right now <laughs> as like they're, they're listening to this podcast as they play with the race cars on the floor <laughs> 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 I mean, to be fair, a child wearing it's also maybe ironic. Like a five-year-old. Well, I mean, we all grow up so fast these days, don't we? In fact, you, you, you've got a child. <laughs> get, get, get my shirt that says I don't want an adult to do. No. <laughs> and then you could be like, good news, my baby boy. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> my, <laughs> my child has a... Uh, I, I did buy a Jaws t-shirt for my child, and... Honestly, he's never even seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a bit young to watch Jaws, to be fair. Yeah, no, I well, agree. I mean, is he even an age yet where you can enjoy a movie? No, I... We we limit screen time um, a lot, you know. Like, we, we do show him little things here and there. Uh, like, he likes watching videos of other babies and... I don't think sure. it really counts, but like, you know, if we do like FaceTime or something, like that's technically uh yeah. him on the screen. But uh yeah, like uh don't actually sit down and watch movies or anything. Um yeah. all right, to try and steer this ship back onto the, the right path here. Yeah, under the right heading. Uh <laughs> some of the other deaths that happen, a party girl <laughs> gets killed after she, actually she's got a whole thing where she actually tries to offer like she makes a deal with the leprechaun. To give mm -hmm. to give her Jennifer Aniston or give him Jennifer Aniston's daughter, and he'll let her go. Uh, or the exact phrase he uses is, "I he won't lay a hand on her." And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, there's going to be like a witty way that he kills her without using his hands. I thought mm -hmm. it was so boring that he just uses telekinesis. I was like, that, that's, that's not witty or funny. Mm -hmm. Like I thought he'd maybe yeah, kick her also, or push, you know. Yeah, uh, it, it also seems like a, a lot of the deaths in this movie are kind of like weirdly repetitive. Like it feels like there's a lot of people getting like, you know, their heads chopped off or falling and getting like their heads impaled. It's yeah. like, like I, I thought either mm. he would do something that sort of circumvents it, or maybe when he's killing someone else, that person is like swiping a blade or something, and that would kill the other person. You know, that would kill her. Yeah. You know, he would get around like a sort of loopholes. Like technically, he never broke his promise. He never laid his hand on her. But 
it, it's just like, I don't know, she's just in telekinesis. And it, 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 I mean, the, the death's kind of a fun idea, although I'm not sure it would actually... It, she seems to be like just stone cold dead as soon as it happens, and I'm not sure she would actually be dead yet. But basically, mm-hmm. he's like throwing sprinklers at her, and like one lands in her mouth <coughs> and starts sprinkling mm-hmm. blood from her mouth, uh, which is a fun visual. Yeah. But that's about Sorry. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like there had to be like a killing blow as well after that, though. Yeah. Yeah, and her her whole thing is that she's just like drunk all the time. That I feel like you could have played with that more, like have something mm. involving drinking or whatever. She does. Uh, I forget exactly what it is, but she does have a funny line where they're trying to get away, and she's driving, and like she says something like, "I am so drunk right now." It's like, uh, it was kind of funny. There's yeah. nothing funny about drunk driving, but you know, but yeah, the yeah. joke was funny. I also thought it was really lame how, like, she okay, she does this thing where she traps Lila in the basement and then tells the rest of them that she's dead. And I thought, oh, that's mm-hmm. super dark. That's really villainous. And then it ends up being revealed to the rest of the group. I thought there'd be a big moment where they find her later and then realize that she lied. She ends up just slipping up and says something <laughs> that tips them all off that she lied. And they immediately just go, wait, did you lie? Is she okay? That's yeah. evil. And I'm like, wait, just like that. <laughs> that's it. That, that's all you're doing with that plot point? <laughs> it's like... It's not that far after. <laughs> like, it feels oh, no, like she just trapped her and, like... <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure it's the next scene time you see her. It's the next scene that you see her in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all get to the car, and it's when they're driving in the car, which is going kind of slow. Because mm. uh, it's, like, I guess, an electric vehicle that's not uh, fully charged or something. Yeah, and you better believe the leprechaun has uh, some things to say about that. <laughs> uh, so I watched this on stream, and someone delightfully pointed out that when the lep shows up in this scene... On the uh, the filmmaker guy had a drone that he was using to uh, film stuff. The mm-hmm. lab comes in sitting on the drone and like controlling it uh, with the remote. And someone said he's uh, he's the Green Goblin on his little oh. glider. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, okay, that's funny. You I ask. like that. I mean, w- what year did this come out? It was twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. That's funny. It's the same year as uh, Halloween. Uh, so I feel like you do Leprechaun in twenty eighteen, and it's like. Of course you have to have a drone. Like, there's no <laughs> way you're not having the leprechaun on a drone if you're making this movie in 2018. It's, I mean, it's it's so obvious, but it's funny. Yeah. He uses the drone to decapitate the filmmaker guy. That's, a, that's an okay death. That's a decapitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize the drone's blades were so powerful. I know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things in this that are quite powerful to, to like, <laughs> impale people the way they do. Um, in fact, Rose ends up dying later on. So so Rose's big death, because they, they think they've won because they've blown the leprechaun up. But when the other two leave the house, Rose is left alone with them. I'm glad that you... I'm glad that you included the word up in that sentence. <laughs> oh, yes, I wasn't implying that they had some sort of weird... <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> lip fellatio, fellatio. Yes. Uh, so Rose is left alone, but so kind of, that that's like the whole thing was like ripping off both Evil Dead Three and Terminator Two because eventually the lip forms like the T one thousand where all these parts come together. Oh yeah, yeah. But before that, <laughs> um, he's lots of little lips, just like the little Bruce Campbells and Evil Dead Three yeah. to to the point where and some of the stuff like dancing, yeah. <laughs> to the point where some of the stuff they do, I'm pretty sure is exactly what happened in that scene in Army of Darkness. Oh no, totally, yeah, um, yeah. I, I wasn't quite sure. It's like, is this an homage or rip off? <laughs> I like how you put the same sort of accent on that rip off. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say homage; it's a homage. Yeah, rip off, rip off. <laughs> uh, but she ends up, uh, you know. She, you know, she gets slashed and stuff, but she, she ultimately dies by landing on her golden troll troll award, which again mm. uh, is sharp enough that when she lands on it, it goes straight through her head. <laughs> which you know, it was a nice funny death because they'd set it up earlier on, so it was like okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, and then so there was like one really funny part where she gets like just so frustrated, she like bites one of the little leps like head off. Oh yeah, she like she's uh <laughs> biting off like a, I don't know pick a food item but she just puts it in her mouth and just rips his head off and she's yeah. got like green blood coming out of her mouth and I, I, forget, I think she says something like like I've been like a vegan for like you know this many years or whatever but it's like yeah the, the lip pushed her too far uh, apparently so um <laughs> Yeah, because they're going to burn all the parts of him because they know he'll come back if they don't. But unfortunately, yeah. he's too quick, and he 
uh, kills Rose. So they end up having to fight him. Uh, like, and there's a couple of times, this is around the time in the movie where he starts doing Jennifer Aniston's quote unquote voice uh, to say, <laughs> to oh, be you, determined. You can <laughs> have get your to the bottom back. of it. <laughs> there's nothing to get to the bottom to, but I figured it out. It's solved. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of memorable parts of this episode. <laughs> hey, people will enjoy it. They probably will. They, they, they like when you uh, send us down these weird paths. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sick freaks. <laughs> yeah, so they end up... Playing well, with their race cars <laughs> in their underwear, <laughs> listening to this podcast. <laughs> One of the things that caught me off guard is that towards the end, when they blow up the house, um, like it's on I'm fire and stuff. You, I'm glad you put the word up in that sentence. Not every time someone says the word blow, <laughs> it, it's not... Like, no one thought that was going to be a sexual sense. No, oh, I guess we know where your mind's at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you mean? What did you mean by I'm glad you put the word up in that sense? Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, I just... Just something so suggestive about the Is way it? you say what's it. suggestive? Go on, Tim, tell me. Tell me what's suggestive about it. It's it's fala- it's fallacitic. <laughs> fallacitic. Yeah, the way you say it. Yeah. Also, uh, that re- bizarrely fallacitic remain- <laughs> reminds me, earlier on in the film, uh, the leprechaun like incorrectly refers to something as a golden shower because... Uh, <laughs> Very the, funny. The, yeah, the, the girl who's drinking like spits her beer out on him but when she sees him, and he goes, "Oh, a golden shower," and I'm like, "That's not a golden shower." <laughs> oh, Lep, we got a. You've been gone for too long, man. We got some stuff to, <laughs> that we got to show you. Uh, so that that stuck out to me. Um, all I could think honestly, of the, the Lep oh. probably is a piss freak. He probably like. Is it, it's so close to gold that he probably loves it. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, the, when the house explodes at the end, it explodes like there's like nitro like all throughout the house. It has this big boom. That's probably the clover juice. Uh, the clover juice. Uh, uh, Very all, uh, a volatile. All I could think is that at the end of the movie is like, how are these two survivors Wait. going to explain all these dead people? That's all you could think? Yeah, what else would I be thinking? I so what? Just like for the rest of your life, that's the only thing you're going to be thinking about. No, in that moment, in the movie, as the final okay. scenes played out, that's what I could think. So when did you like start thinking about other stuff again? <laughs> <laughs> well, when the credits started rolling, I thought, oh, thank, that's over. You know, I was, I was, I was very <laughs> pleased that it was done. Thank the lip. <laughs> and I've now seen all the Leprechaun movies, which means I don't have to watch them ever again. And that Until is, they make a new one. <laughs> well, that's not watching it again, though. That's just like, okay, I'll have to watch the new mm-hmm. one, but like that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wa- it. one one through eight. I ain't watching ever again. Mm-hmm. You sure about that? <laughs> I am pretty positive. Okay, we've reviewed them already. That's it. It's done. It's in the can. What a! Uh, <laughs> well, what if you get married and your wife wants to watch it every day? <laughs> I'll say, <laughs> I'll be like, honey, choose your next words very carefully because the divorce papers that I could have drawn up depend on them. <laughs> Can you live without watching these leprechaun movies with me? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm not a tough man, please. I don't have many deal breakers. <laughs> But one of one of my deal breakers is making me watch the Leprechaun movies again. I will not, under any circumstance, do it. And yeah, we should do a special episode that's just <laughs> you talking about your deal breakers. <laughs> uh, I'll draw up a list. <laughs> oh, good. yeah, we'll do like a, a top ten. Top ten deal breakers. <laughs> you could do like you know. We could make it fun. We could do like horror deal breakers. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. What have we skipped over? Because we, we kind of, I just kind of jumped around to different things. Is there anything in the movie that you would like to talk about, Tim? Uh, there's a very big thing I would like to talk about. Go on. The ghost of Ozzy. 
Oh, uh, the Force Ghost, yes. Yeah. Who, <laughs> after the after the house explodes, just stands and waves, and now he gets to go to heaven. <laughs> he fades away yeah. into the good night. And don't forget about like when he first shows up and uh, he has all the worms like spilling out of him, so she gives him saran wrap. <laughs> Oh yeah, his intestines are falling out, so she gives him a uh, cling film to use the the UK uh, version. Cling film. I think that's what that's what Saran wraps. That's mm. the proper name for it, Tim. Sounds dirty. <laughs> uh, you want to watch a cling film tonight? Like, ugh, no thanks. No. Get away. <laughs> no, no. Cling film. All right. So. <laughs> It clings. <laughs> it makes sense. Well, things that cling are not my things. Uh, okay, okay. Well, he walks. He walks through the wall like a ghost, and then mm -hmm. the cling film just stays behind and falls to the floor. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I think Lila says something very funny, like, "Hey, I can't do that." Or like, yeah, and then she's like, "Oh, see, I can't do that." Okay, I guess <laughs> I'm on my own. Or, you know, there's a lot of little witty lines at the end of scenes yeah. like that after a certain point in the movie, which felt like, "Okay, we're going for this tone now." Yeah, it's, uh, strange. <laughs> yeah, it's very odd. I, I mean, uh, I. Uh, I mean, I guess the big things we haven't really talked about are the actual leprechaun deaths. Which it seems like he had a couple. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, well, yeah. When he's riding on the car, he ends up like getting impaled through the eye on a tree branch. <clears throat> oh yeah. So that's one of them. <laughs> and then he steals Ozzy's eye from his corpse and puts it in his head to replace his eye that he lost. Smart. <laughs> oh yeah, economical for sure. Uh, um, <laughs> that's one thing I, I have always liked about the Leprechaun is he is like you don't see this a lot in horror villains I, I feel like where he gets like beat up a little bit like you know he, he, he's not he's very menacing but like also sometimes people can just kind of take him too like <laughs> okay actually there's something i want to mention is that they mm -hmm. re-established something that was in the first movie which is mm -hmm. that if shoes are like yes. a mess he has to yes. tidy them up so there's a scene where like she runs out the closet when she was hiding mm -hmm. and he's like, oh you can't leave all these shoes scattered around like this and he sort of like you know this, he goes around and picks them up and puts them back neatly except one pair that he thinks are ugly and he puts them in the trash and i was like oh they're going to use that later they're going to realize that's mm -hmm. something they can use later and they never did yeah it's, it's a nice callback to the first film but yeah it's weird to not really like use it in any context or anything like surely the way you defeat the lap is you take him to a shoe factory and just knock all the shelves over <laughs> and just like oh my god yeah yeah there you well, go what's kind of funny in this one is that they do end up trapping him in like in a circle of iron and i was kind of like okay just leave him there like you know try to uh think of a plan or get like a big box of iron or something to, to try, kind of trap him in but because and instead they try to do all the weird like pumping him full of stuff and exploding him which in theory, sounds good, but you know the lip is just going to reform. Yeah, they, they, I forgot about the iron thing. This is before they explode them, I think, uh, where two yeah. of them are hiding in, like, you know, the cupboards or something. It does. It, like, it feels very cheap that they're just kind of like, get them now, and, like, someone just, like, throws a blanket off of them, like, from the floor or whatever, and, like, I'm here, like... <laughs> Is weird. Yeah, <laughs> this is more stealthy, like a like a, a special ops team who, <laughs> yeah, you know, blend in with the background. They're just perfectly hidden. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Because when we get to these last three girls, they do stick around <laughs> for a long time as a team. Uh, mm -hmm. Before that, there's a lot of like splitting up they and cling like, together. <laughs> they, they cling. They cling like film. <laughs> Ugh, still don't like it. <laughs> Um, yes, they deduce that iron is a is a weakness of his because uh, the coin that Lila wears around her neck that her mother gave her uh, probably has iron in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! I can't believe we we're, we're even gonna just skip right past the tampon scene. <laughs> Oh, I know. Also, yeah, when they when <laughs> when they lure him in the house to try and trap him, right? They've got his pot of gold because they found the pot and it had like one like little layer of gold at the bottom. So they've got that at the top. So they filled it with something to make it look as full. And when he starts counting his gold one by one, he pulls out a tampon and then he pours over <laughs> he pours over the pot of gold and it's mostly just tampons that come pouring out. <laughs> and then Lila has to hit a one liner. She leans in and goes. Oh, it looks like it's your time of the month. <laughs> Pretty funny. That's and, not funny. Uh, <laughs> that is such a lame line. 
It's so lame. Yeah. The funny thing is, is like to some people, like tampons are just as good as gold. Too. <laughs> Certain people. <laughs> I thought, like, given if you have like pure solid gold, given what that goes for, mm. I think any woman on the planet would happily have an awkward <laughs> couple of days to get the money instead. <laughs> It'd be worth the discomfort. <laughs> For some, perhaps, but the real ones, no. <laughs> the real ones. <laughs> Those proud women who will, who will tur- turn, o- turn over thousands, if not millions, of dollars yeah. to, to, to for, for a bit of discomfort. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. If I'm, you're... <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> if you're a proud woman, uh, sound off in the comments. <laughs> 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 what are we talking about? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. That's so weird. <laughs> you, you bring such a weird energy sometimes to the to the show. I don't even know what to... Me? Uh, how do, how do I know? <laughs> um, oh, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, what else to go? Yeah, the, the end of the movie is Lep's actually hitchhiking to go to the city where the cash for gold thing is so he can get his gold back. <laughs> So the sequel teases him sitting on the back of like a bird truck, and it's like kind of sad. Like, yeah, he he he's not even allowed to sit up front. He has to sit in the back with the chickens. Messed up. Mm. Mm. It's nice he's getting a ride, but I don't yeah, know. what happened to his little car that he had in the first movie? <laughs> Great question. Mm. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, I don't remember a lot. I just remember the stupid riding around in the little car. Tim, I guess it's time to rate Leprechaun Returns. I think that's where we're at. Uh, I didn't even get to bring up the the fact that he made an MC Hammer joke. Um. Oh, actually, no, that's a good point. Uh, the uh, oh, which one is it? Oh, it's, it's the one who eventually falls on the 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 golden trail. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the first thing that happens to her is he throws a hammer at her and the spiky end of the hammer stabs her in the tit. Like, right in the boob. <laughs> that really made me laugh. That that may actually be the best moment of the whole movie because it just was so, so unexpected. Uh, the hammer time joke was lame, though. Like, it didn't even make sense just because he used the hammer. I thought... Yeah. <laughs> lame. The lamest, most obvious joke, What's... along with the period it's... joke. Nonsense. But I don't, I don't know, I never think of the Leprechaun as very, being very, like, pop culture aware, you know? Mm. Like, I, I think he's made some jokes in the past, like, but I don't know, MC Hammer s- seems like a bridge oh, too far. See when, he brought <laughs> up the, see when he compared the uh, phone to a Walkman and the character said, what's a Walkman? Mm-hmm. Did you feel mm-hmm. old? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I was like, don't tell oh, me I, those... I'm right there with you, Lip. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Don't, don't tell me college kids now don't know what a Walkman is. That, that's that's where we're at at this point. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Mm, yeah, bad vibes, mm. bad vibes. All right, Tim, rate uh, the movie out of 10. Uh, yeah, so again, this one is very interesting to me. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking about it. Um, it's only the second time I've seen it. Uh, yeah, I think second. I, I don't think I've seen it three times, but um, weirdly, it's not one that super sticks with me. Even though on paper it does kind of sound like it has, <laughs> like believe it or not, like some things going for it. Uh, it's it's interesting. Um, and you kind of hope that the talent is going to make it rise above what it sounds like on paper. Which on paper it's like a sci-fi original movie that's a legacy sequel, um, you know that that doesn't necessarily like uh, excite one uh, that much. But um, th- there's definitely fun to be had. Uh, again, I I am sad that Warwick Davis uh, did not want to reprise his role, but I mean he's probably pretty old and. I'm sure they probably didn't have a ton of money to offer him, so maybe you know whatever his reasons. Um, I don't think I don't think I've seen him coming out and saying anything negative about it. it. Just sounds like he was offered 
I don't know if he was offered the role or, or some type of uh, cameo or something, but you know, it said that he like politely turned them down. Um, this new person's all right. Um, yeah, you know, I, I thought the makeup was fine. Uh, the movie was a little dark. Uh, I, I will give it that. Um, again, the the things I think you know hurt it the most is just really, um, like you're saying, kind of the mishmash of tones a little bit and the. Um, really just annoying kind of tropey characters. Like, uh, I, I think this could have been something that's a lot more genuinely fun if, yeah, the characters didn't get, get in the way and having like kind of doing like the cheeky, you know, meta humor, like we were saying before, like all the little quips and stuff that come after, like someone tries to say a funny line, like the, I, I hate like modern comedy so much. Cause like, or, you know, comedy in, in quotes, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know how many people actually think this is funny, but so much of it is not, like, actually doing funny things. It's about doing, like, stupid things, but then having the character make a joke about how they just did something stupid, and then it's funny because they're making the joke about how what they just did was stupid. And, like, to me, that's just not funny. Like, it's like, no, like, you were just lazy, couldn't think of something actually funny so you thought of something stupid but then you had a character say like wasn't that stupid and then that's like supposed to make it funny it, it's so dumb and lazy um so yeah that stuff did kind of make me mad uh but hey i i you know i i probably sound like i'm being too negative I, you know i can't be that bad because the lep is back they they made a horrible mistake with uh that wrestling guy <laughs> that that wrestling man who wanted to make a leprechaun movie for some reason and do a reboot and make it very bad. I don't uh, think he was, was the one who said, let's do this. Like, I think he <laughs> just, just hired, <laughs> but okay. I mean, it, I, I'm not just talking about the actor. I mean, the whole movie was like yes. WWE studio. So I'm assuming there's some giant wrestling man who was sitting in a room with a single typewriter, uh, oh, yeah, patiently he, typing away. <laughs> his name is Vince McMahon. Yes. This is, Oh, bad man. Uh, Very bad Vince man. Vince McBadman, yes. <laughs> I would say. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, you know, again, I, I can't be too mad about it. The Lep is back uh, and <laughs> stronger than ever uh, with a, you know, <laughs> a true return to form. Um, I don't know. It, it's fun. It has some good kills. Uh, there were some parts that made me laugh. There were some parts that made me groan. Uh, I can't say I entirely love it but i can't say i entirely hate it either um it still tickles uh you know the cockles of my heart a little bit uh so you know i'll give it a i guess a six God, <laughs> it's that, okay that was it's a not long great. summary that was <laughs> such a long <laughs> summary um I, I will round up by bringing up one small moment that i had forgotten to earlier which is mm. at one point uh when they're collecting supplies to fight leprechaun or whatever it is uh the the woman who kept having sex with her boyfriend earlier right she is running mm. and somehow oh yes right and so so earlier on the boyfriend was sliced down the middle right um mm -hmm. so but when he was sliced his arm was kind of up so his arm also got cut <laughs> off so one of his arms was like severed kind of you know just below the elbow and it's sort of mm. sitting there. And then next to that, of course, is like the, the half of his body with the, the open half facing up. So it's just this, you know, mm. man-shaped, gory <laughs> spot. So yeah. She's running to get like something. I think it's like maybe the fuses or something in like a, a supply thing right like up against the wall mm. that's behind them. And she mm. runs and trips on the arm and falls face first into like his exposed mm. body. Right? And it's yeah. obviously disgusting and gross out. But the whole moment feels like so absurdly silly because, like, you see this arm, it's outside. She has infinite room to the left, mm -hmm. infinite room to the right, in which she could go any direction she wants to <laughs> to avoid it. But somehow yeah. tries to, like, go through it and trips into the gore. It, and really stupid. Yeah, I think she specifically, I think she notices it too. And, like, she specifically says something like, like, you know, don't fall on the body, don't fall on the body. And then she does exactly that. And it's very like over the top. And it, mm. it's not like she falls and gets right back up. It's like, she's like constantly like slipping and sliding all over. And like her face is going directly into it. I actually thought that was legitimately funny. 
I just thought the trip was so like like th- this didn't make any sense. Like have her not noticed mm-hmm. it and kind of trip by accident into it, but it was like no, you kind of knew this was a possibility, and you somehow just went mm-hmm. straight in. This was like that episode of Frasier where Frasier's trying to learn to ride the bike, and then when they start the the uh, the race, he just does like a sort of complete one eighty and crashes into the uh, the hydrant or whatever <laughs> it is. That's what this was. This was somehow the worst possible outcome. She just went straight for. It was. It was. Uh. Whatever. So anyway, yeah. It's like. I a, think that makes it funny though. But yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not the worst in the franchise by any means. If I had it, it may be one of the better ones of the franchise. Because the deaths, I would say the deaths by and large are a bit better than a lot of the films. So, with that said, I will give this <coughs> a four point five. <laughs> okay. No, not enough for you. Okay. Well, tough. Uh, <laughs> that's what it's getting. That has been uh, this episode of Screams After Midnight. I will tell you to go and check out the bonus episodes over at Patreon at the three dollar tier. Every month you get a bonus episode uh, where we talk about another movie, uh, just like the regular episodes. And if you go to the five dollar tier you get access as well to Even More Streams, which is a show where me and Tim just sit down and talk about what other random horror movies we've been watching, as well as Tim quizzing me on horror knowledge or something. So that is that show. Uh, two bonus shows you can get over on Patreon, as well as Early Access and stuff for other shows that are from Male Fuzz Movies, and so on and so on. Uh, otherwise, though, I will tell you to hit the super thanks button below the video if you want to support us as a one-time thing. And you can also support us without money by simply liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing us out, on Twitter, we're at Streams Midnight. You can share us out on there, or share us wherever you want. And uh, otherwise, I would say thank you to our Patreon producers for the month, which are Tyler Hess, Cindy Palacios, David Short, Borden Now, Christopher Moy, David Brown, Al Tradesman, and Alison M. Fordyce. So thank you very much to all of them, and thank you to all of our patrons for their continued support and helping keep Streams After Midnight coming. So there you go. <laughs> what? What are you making a face for? <laughs> that's the show everyone <laughs> hopefully you're having a fun October we'll see you for more horror shenanigans uh, throughout the month see you soon keep watching horror movies we're out